Uh, well, well, very good. We're in very good shape here. Uh, we're pretty much on schedule. And uh, now we're in the uh, question and answer uh, session. Now, because of the large auditorium, we have uh, floating around the, uh, the room are some uh, microphones. You can see them with their hands raised. We have, uh, we have four of them. And so what we'd like to do is uh, entertain a, a series of questions. And uh, so we ask you, uh, when you ask your question, first identify yourself, uh, stand up, and then uh, speak into the microphone uh, with your questions. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm Felino Junpala Fox from the Philippines. Mabruk and history in the making. I practically started my career in Dubai, 1977. It was an opportunity to work with the late Sheikh Rashid. And I'd like to share with the group here that the challenge he gave us at the planning department of Dubai, we were about 20 expats from 14 countries. He challenged us, and I saw, I saw the presentation of Mr. Ali. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed, like he challenged us, like bring Dubai into the first world from the fourth world in 15 years. I think Dubai was able to do that. Uh, design a garden city out of the desert. I think they were able to do that as well. Then for every year of service, we were asked to go around the world and take lessons from, and we brought it back. And then the other one was design Dubai as if there's no oil. And it was really history in the making. And I left Dubai in 1982. And I've done work in 32 countries. So wherever I am today, it was part of the Dubai uh, uh, going beyond the glass ceiling. But I was in Dubai in the World Congress of Architects and Cityscape two weeks ago. And it's very amazing. But one thing that I noticed is that uh, the inclusivity is missing. It used to be more inclusive, like there were more socialized housing, but now it's not very affordable. And another one that I was told also was, Dubai is now the uniqueness of the highest carbon footprint per capita in the world. And I learned that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed has challenged all the architects there now that, that to reduce the carbon footprint. Anyway, congratulations to all the presenters and thank you for sharing. Um, the, um, are there, I'm sure there are other questions, yes? Yeah, I'm uh, George Malas with uh, Siska Hennessy Consulting Engineers. Uh, my question is from an architectural standpoint, what are the main sustainable uh, features that you see um, for the future of uh, skyscrapers? Uh, any one of you, actually, if you would comment, please. Thank you. Mark, you want to? Uh, yeah, I believe that um, uh, most of the work that w we were doing was really on the on the facade work, and I think there's a lot of work still to be done on facade to for the sustainability of, uh, of future towers. But certainly, a lot of the breakthrough work was being done in the MEP and the in the mechanical and electrical systems, and um, how we were were um, treating water and, and recycling, etc. So a lot of that is is current, but there's still a lot of things that are that are really on the edge of being developed, and I, I that's why I precursed the the presentation in that we were looking to to put ourselves ten years in advance, and we don't know all of the, all the advancements that are happening there, but we are trying to build in the flexibility uh, into the project, and I think um, by building into that flexibility uh, into plant rooms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where we can bring in other facilities and other, other invention that may come in the next 10 years um, is what we have to do when we're considering building a project that won't be completed for 10 or 12 years. So the flexibility is important, but um, I think the initiatives are really coming into the MEP. Bill, but, can I? Sure, can I, add, I think the um, Mark's presentation was really terrific. We're all on the cutting edge of materials engineering, structural engineering, wind engineering, uh, the environmental bits. But there's not so much research being done on the social side of these equations. These are new vertical cities. They're new vertical communities. And this idea of stacking the 30-story villages, the seven villages that we had, or Mark's 25-story blocks, is, is the beginning of this idea that each, each of these villages functions like a self-contained community with all the schools and, and recreation facilities and shopping and medical and maintenance and emergency services, all those contained on each of those interstitial star garden floors. And the capacity of these projects to succeed will only 
be and the only sustainability that will make them endure will be if they become functioning communities. Uh, if I make a comment also, it's actually about the council. I'm a trustee of the council, and we're looking for more active involvement from mechanical engineers and sustainable uh, ex ex uh, experts to uh, help us in, in formulating uh, documents that can, can help lay out the state of the art and the, and the research that's needed and where we need to go. So for those of you in the audience who are uh, uh, focused on sustainability and, um, and engineering and mechanical electrical plumbing, uh, we're looking for more involvement in the council. So uh, uh, let me put that advertisement out there. Yes, sir. Robert Reed, Reed with Civil Engineering Magazine. My question is similar about the sustainability. Unless I missed something in the presentations, neither the Burj Dubai nor the Nikhil Tower seems to include wind turbines. Is that a technology that you considered? If not, you know, why not? Is it possible? Is it a fad? Of course. When we've designed the Borges, we started the work about six years ago, yeah. about six years ago. There was talk about, uh, about wind turbine, but uh, one, of the, one of the issues with the city of Dubai and what, um, what makes it so different is that I guess the, uh, the slogan of, uh, of Nike should really be given to the city of Dubai which is just do it, which means that you know, we're busy designing and if somebody doesn't have a proven technology and if that's going to change the structure of the building, we really didn't have time to delay. Uh, we, we wanted to move on. But we know very well that you know, as we move on, there'll be new buildings coming into the city where as technology improves, if it's really uh, in, in the wind turbine or if it's really on the mechanical electrical improvement and many other issues, you know, we can do them in, in other buildings. We, as a developer, a public company, uh, quarterly results, all that is, is, is guarding, you know, our program. And, and to be honest with you, a lot, of it, a lot of these issues are new and they will be proven. Maybe they are proven now, not six years ago. But, you know, they, they are, I think, as everybody said, that all developers, architects, engineers, they are more concerned with the sustainability. And, the, and, and when you calculate it, there's such a great value, too. Can I, Bill, just... The, your question about wind is a fascinating one for us as well. We have a, a patent pending now on what, what are called architectural autopilots. And what they are, the airlons that you find on wings, we've turned it vertically so that as the wind blows around the building that you can actually dampen the, the vortexes of the wind by adjusting these vertical ailerons on the side of the building. And they're, they're about three to four stories tall and they would all be all the technology exists on, on um, any uh, modern uh, passenger jet. But, the, but the, the idea of capturing that wind to generate power, in our initial efforts, what we found was that we could include um, wind cylinders, as, as you know, instead of sails that spin. But, but the only power that we could generate was about 15% of, of what the building used which isn't bad because that 15% powers all the public spaces, all the civic spaces. And so we begin with that. And as we get better, and as, as Mohammed said and Mark have said, you, you know, you're designing while on the conducting stand. Technology is moving while you are designing and building and what you think you know today is out of date by the time you're halfway through the towers. These are improbable buildings. And that's why we're all interested in them because the, the community of thought that all of you represent, the thing that amazed us when we announced the Tower of 1001 Arabian Nights is that people called up and just offered their ideas to be part of pushing the profession's envelope. And that generosity of sharing ideas, I think, is what's a hallmark of what um, Anthony's put together in this, in this conference, too. And the profession has changed from a point when we used to hoard information and protect it for a competitive advantage. On these towers, we need to share information because we are all teaching each other about how to make these things work. And I think it's the best part of the profession and absolutely the best part of the art of what we're all doing right now. Uh, yeah. By the way, in the, in the last session of the day, uh, the four o'clock session, there is a, uh, one of the buildings that's gonna be presented actually does have wind turbines, so that might be a good time to repose your, your, your question to them. Yeah. Can I just, um, we, we did consider the wind turbines, but um, because we have obviously the slots and, and, and way of getting wind through there, but um, we felt that that was something that 
as, as you just said, is being developed and we wanted the building to stand alone to a lead gold without having any of that on it. And obviously if we, if we developed it in the future to be able to, to, be able to include it, then it would just be a benefit that extra 15% would come in. Um, we also consider the fact that the, it is a dusty environment there and we we're trying to keep the people, uh, keep the, the building as clean as possible and obviously anything mechanical um, does, it, does attract the dust. So we're, we're really trying to keep the building as clean as possible. Okay. Now there's a question in the back there. My name is Don Ely from Nukon Company. I have a question for all the members of the panel. Uh, we're talking about uh, a kilometer high building. What about two or three kilometers, five or 10,000 feet? What roadblocks do the members of the panel see to these even taller buildings? Um, financial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let me talk about a practical question is uh, your inner ear. Uh, just air pressure, you can't really pressurize these buildings, so you have to figure out how to deal with uh, going um, essentially from uh, sea level up to Denver, you know. Uh, when you think about it, you know, it, it, some of these, uh, these hot, very high elevators, these are issues you have to consider. I would just would like to say that uh, as a developer, you know, maybe, maybe the architects have different views, but as a developer, cost is an issue mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we build them, we have to put in a margin for our shareholders, and, and cost uh, is an issue. Um, Syllable uh, price per square meter or square feet is is an issue too, um, and you know when we when we did the the, the tower, one of the challenge that we had is that we were not really sure will people actually buy condos and live at the hundred and fortieth floor. That was a challenge for us. You know we we took a chance and um, beside the challenge of engineering and, and 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 the rest of it, but you know will really customer. Be, be able to accept to live that high. Uh, but before that, I guess uh, cost and rate of return is a very serious issue for us. So if you tell me that, Mohammed, will you do, will you build in a 1.5 kilometers? I'll probably tell you no. After what I've gone through, I think, <laughs> you know, no. It's, it's, it cost is a very serious uh, issue. I think engineering is a very serious issue because, I mean, with all my respect to the, all the architects and the engineer, you know, we'll be held responsible and we are the people who face the customer every day when there is a water pressure issue in his apartment or there is, you know, structural issues and all that. And, and my joke to all of my designers and architects, I said, you know, I love you a lot, guys, but you design and leave. And, you know, we are the guys who have to face the music with our customer. So one have to be very frank and very honest about it. Okay. Right, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Anyway, it's, it's time for us to, uh, to draw to the close of this, uh, this session. I think you'll all agree we've had a very interesting uh, uh, session. We, we, have, we have guests uh, for our speakers, which I will go out here in a second. Uh, and I'd also uh, like to remind everyone that uh, Mayor Daly is going to be here after the, uh, uh, for, the, for the beginning of the next session, which, so we'd like to promptly start that one. At, um, at 11.15, so I'd like to have a, a round of applause for our speakers. I think a very, very good session. <laughs>